through an osmosis question with you. Now, with osmosis questions, generally, they always talk about a movement of water uh, in terms of water potential. And a lot of the marks are organised around being able to describe a low water potential, i.e. a very negative number, compared to a higher water potential, which is closer to zero. And this is where most students fall down, so we've got to be careful about that. Also, students often manage to write a lot of information, but they never actually use those keywords of water potential or osmosis. So remember, we're always talking about the movement of water and where it's going from and where it's going to and why. And the second thing that we need to think about is when we're talking about along a water potential gradient. We can't say that. Well, if you say along a water potential gradient, we never know whether it's going up or down. So we're going to say down a water potential gradient and that will make sure we get our marks. Okay, so the effect of watering tomato plants with sodium chloride solution on the mass of tomatoes. And we've got a table in front of us. We've got the type of tomato plant, two normal ones and two genetically modified ones, GM ones. And that's also compared with the fresh mass and the dry mass of tomatoes. Now remembering that the fresh mass is actually mostly water. That's if you took a plant and you weighed it, then it's got a lot of water in it. Uh, when you dry it out, it's been desiccated and you're left with just the cellular components. So the question asks, what conclusions can you draw about the effects of watering plants with sodium chloride solution on the mass of tomatoes? So we're not bothered about whether it's the normal or the genetically modified. We're just looking at fresh mass and dry mass. So we need to mention fresh mass and dry mass in our answer, and there are two marks, one for talking about fresh and one for talking about dry. So we can see that with the fresh mass, there's a decrease. So that's what we're going to say. There's a decrease in the fresh mass. And then for the dry mass, we notice that there's a really, really small, very insignificant um, increase in the dry mass. So what we're going to say there is that there's no effect on dry mass, or if we do say that there's a small increase, it needs to be highlighted that it is indeed a small increase. Okay, so for the second part of the question, it asks us to use our knowledge of water potential to suggest how watering plants with sodium chloride affects the fresh mass of the tomatoes. So two things about this question. We need to be answering in terms of water potential, because that's what it's asked us, and we only need to talk about the fresh mass of the tomatoes. So clearly we need to say that the inside of the tomato cells have a higher water potential, i.e. one that's closer to zero, because the outside has salt in it, it has a lot of solute, so that is more negative. So for the first mark we're going to say water potential inside the tomato plant is higher than outside the tomato plant. The second thing we're going to say is that that causes water to be drawn out of the tomato plants. That's the second mark. Of course, then we're going to say by osmosis. And we're going to make reference to the fact that most of the fresh mass is, of course, water.